Hello everyone, it is uh, I think 1.39 a.m. on a Saturday morning. If you can't tell, I am actively hammered. Why am I doing this right now? It's because my roommate is at his girlfriend's house and uh, I have the free house to record. So, you know what? Screw it. Let's get this shit done. Um, I'm going to talk about Redis and Memcache today and assuming my brain can support it because I guess the Balmer curve tells me that I can have a couple drinks and, and you know, talk about code then uh, hopefully this video will be coherent. That being said, I'm also about eight or nine drinks in, so I'm a little bit past the Balmer curve, but you know what? I can still talk about computer science, so let's get it done. Hey, yeah, so this is me from the next morning. Uh, I actually did record that video, and uh, I looked back on it, and I was like, damn, I am slurring a lot of words right now. So um, we're going to do a re-recording, and uh, hopefully I'll explain a little bit more concisely this time. So let's do Memcache and Redis. Um, so basically, in terms of what Memcache and Redis are, they are both solutions that are typically used for caching in large-scale distributed systems. The reason for this is that they, generally speaking, store their data in RAM, random access memory, and that allows you to basically build something called a distributed hash map, which can access keys and set keys at O of one time, which is great, because obviously databases on disk can't do that. Um, as we can see, though, there are pretty significant differences between the two services themselves, um, mainly in the sense that um, Memcache is basically like a subset of Redis. But, you know, sometimes it's good to have a more limited feature set because you can build out more. So, what is Memcache? Like I said, Memcache allows you to build a distributed hash map amongst um, a bunch of nodes. However, the nodes basically don't know about one another. So generally speaking, you're actually kind of just using this client library to go ahead and wire all those requests to the proper node. How do we wire each request to the right node? Well, generally speaking, we're using consistent hashing. So basically, you give all of your you know, application servers that are going to be using memcached instances a list of all the nodes that are running memcached, and then that'll allow them to create a consistent hashing ring. Um, Additionally, you have an LRU cache, so if each memcache instance gets too big, or basically there's too much data in there and you need to evict something in order to make room for a new element, you're using the LRU algorithm. And then, you know, a couple of other features that are built in are, um, you know, basically just like compare and set. Um, generally speaking, there's not really any failure handling for memcache. They don't have any built-in like replication or availability measures. So um, what actually a company like Facebook did, and I'll link this lecture um, from like MIT basically in the video description, is that they use something called like a gutter Redis instance, where every time um, a Redis, uh, not a Redis instance, um, a memcache instance failed, they basically go ahead and throw a new memcache instance in there to just take its place, and then eventually it'll get repopulated over time. But there's no like, um, you know, copying over of the data from one instance to another, which is interesting. Okay, so what is Redis? Well, at least on a single node, um, Redis is a modification of memcache that basically has the following features. So obviously it's an LRU distributed hash map, but it's got some other stuff too. So instead of just being a hash map from strings to strings, you can actually have other data types as values in the hash maps. So that those can be sets, um, you know, strings, but with atomic operations like appending to the string, um, maps and lists, and you can also even have transactions. So if you want to make multiple writes to a single node and make sure that those are um, executed both serially and also as an atomic unit, you can do that. You can also even make range queries on a single partition. And there's also a way to kind of um, go ahead and hash keys using only part of the key, um, doing something called a hashtag, which allows you to kind of have some control over where each key is going to be sent to in a partitioning scheme. Then finally, there's also a concept of actual disk persistence, which makes Redis a little bit more viable as an actual database for your application as well. And you can do disk persistence via checkpointing, which is probably faster, but obviously comes with the cost of losing some writes if you don't checkpoint everything. Or you can use a write-ahead log, um, where basically every single write is going to the disk before it's written in memory, and this obviously comes at the cost of slower writes. Um, in terms of Redis cluster, Redis cluster is basically what Redis calls, um, you know, running a bunch of Redis nodes in a distributed manner. So basically the point here is that this provides both high availability and consistency. So how do they provide high ability? Well, unlike memcache, they actually support replication out of the box. So that uses single leader replication with an automatic failover. 
Um, the thing with single leader replication here is that some writes can be lost. So if the leader has some writes and it's replicating them asynchronously to some of its replicas, and then the leader goes ahead and fails before all of those writes get properly sent out to all of the followers, then those writes are probably just going to be lost. Um, so how do we actually do a failover? Well, there's a gossip protocol between all the nodes where you're basically sharing heartbeats that convey the, you know, kind of the state of the node as well as the partitions that it's holding. And then uh, in order now to basically, you know, put a new replica to the master, what needs to happen is that a quorum of master nodes amongst all partitions need to basically go ahead and agree that um, this new follower is going to become the leader. And they use an epoch number to do that. And so this basically allows us to prevent split brain because obviously a quorum of nodes can't make a um, conflicting decision for a single epoch. So that's pretty smart there how they make sure to prevent split brain. And then finally, um, in order to kind of do partitioning, unlike a bunch of other database solutions, which most of which we've kind of just seen using um, consistent hashing so far, this actually uses the fixed number of partitions solution that I discussed from DDIA, where there are exactly 16,384 fixed partitions with fixed ranges, and then your job is basically to make sure that um, you know, you're putting the right number of partitions on each node such that there aren't too many hotspots. And obviously, you know, due to the fact that there's replication, if there are certain hotkeys, Hopefully, the load won't be too great on them because you'll actually be able to serve a lot of requests from those replicas as opposed to just having to serve them all from one instance. Okay, so in terms of uh, comparison between memcache and Redis, as you can see, um, Redis is basically just memcache with a bunch of additional features built in out of the box. So why would you ever not want to use it? Well, um, by virtue of having all these features built in, it makes it harder to kind of diverge from that design pattern. So let's say you needed strongly consistent data, maybe you'd be better off just using memcached and then kind of building out your own system using something with like a coordination service in order to ensure strong consistency. Um, maybe you want alternate replication patterns like a leaderless replication schema, which you know kind of resembles a Dynamo database, then perhaps you'd be better off using memcached and then you know kind of implementing that yourself. Or maybe even you want to use just a coordination service in general for all of that partition management as opposed to just using a gossip protocol. Um, because gossip protocol, even though it does generally work, you know, it's just a little bit harder to reason about sometimes. Um, you know, you can do that too. So in conclusion, both Redis and Memcached are super useful systems for implementing caching. And in an interview, I imagine it probably won't really come up if you just said, yeah, I'm going to use Redis or Memcache in order to implement my cache. But I think it's important to know the subtle differences between the two of them, because that's kind of what this channel is all about, is being able to you know, hear all of the names of these different technology services and basically go and say, OK, well, actually, now I understand why one is different from the other. Um, obviously, caching is hugely beneficial for any large scale distributed system. And as a result of that, you should basically be using it whenever you can um, and until it pretty much prices you out. So, you know, as long as you can afford it, you should be using caching. Um, that video I mentioned about caching at Facebook basically says that pretty much 99% of their read requests are handled by their cache in order to take load off their databases and allow them to keep operating. So, okay. I uh, hope this video was useful. Sorry I couldn't post the drunk one, but it was probably double as long and very incoherent. But uh, have a good one, guys.